This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Like any director, James Cameron had needs that needed to be taken care of. No, God, please, no, no! No! With Avatar, James Cameron desperately needed a camera that could adapt to the crazy movie he was attempting to make, and Sony delivered with one of last year's hottest cameras, the Sony Venice and Rialto system, a camera that allowed cinematographers the option of detaching the sensor block of the camera. This feature, combined with a powerful sensor, better color science, and an IMAX stamp of approval, brought on an explosion of innovation that changed the way movies were shot. But who came up with the vision for this camera? And how has it changed the industry from movies to TV shows to commercials? Well. Let's talk about that. One of the most important needs for Cameron's Avatar series was the ability for his crew to handhold and shoulder mount a 3D beam splitter rig, which is this crazy thing right here. And it's a task that has become exceedingly difficult when you have to account for big, bulky cinema cameras and all the servos and gear that come with them. And at the end of the day, no one likes a process that is complicated, involves a bunch of plugins and third party adapters. You just want things to work and make logical sense, right? And that's why today's sponsor, Squarespace, takes that all out of the question and creates a super easy way to build a website without all of the complicated stuff. Oh, nice segue. Smooth. Good blend. Well, not as nice or smooth as all the time you'd save building a website if you use Squarespace with their easy to design, customizable templates, scheduling, and more. Dude, that was painful. But still not as painful as trying to painstakingly code your own website when you don't have the time to learn another skill and just want to be out there filming something and getting better at your lighting technique. With Squarespace, you can have a professional looking site that you won't be embarrassed to send to potential clients and that you won't have to worry about if it looks bad on mobile devices. Don't believe us? Well, Squarespace has given us the opportunity to invite you to try it out for yourself right now. You can head over to squarespace.com slash frame voyager below in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code frame voyager. Now back to more about James Cameraman. All the complications of a traditional rig system were getting in the way of what Cameron was wanting to do in Avatar. Double the cameras means double the weight, and especially beam splitter configurations are not kind to a DOP's back. So, I mean, what 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 grueling shoot day wise? What I mean, was there a particular take that was just like just damn near impossible to hold this camera um, and get it going? You know, I think running with it is is the hardest thing. Meaning that reducing the weight by a considerable margin is one of the greatest blessings a 3D film enthusiast could wish for. Well, it's either that or hiring a crew of bodybuilders, or James Cameron can just haul the thing himself around, which he does quite often. Did your camera guys just hate you by the end of this project? I was the camera guy. I Did you, a, you really handle oh, this Oh yeah, thing? yeah, I operated, I operated all the handheld shots. The only thing I didn't do was Steadicam, because Steadicam is a, you know, I have a great deal of respect for the sure. art of Steadicam. So Cameron came up with this crazy idea that, I mean, other people have had too. What if you could just decouple the sensor block from the camera body? He reached out to Sony for a solution for this. They heard us. They heard what Jim wanted in a camera system, and they were willing to take their state-of-the-art Venice camera and conform it to Jim's needs. This challenge was posed to Sony engineers who happily ran with the idea, working on a prototype systems which were internally nicknamed the J camera. I love you, I love you, I love you! So far, we can't find any indications on how that original J camera might have looked, but we're inclined to believe that the Sony Venice was developed with the extendable sensor block in mind, as any standard Venice system can have its imaging system detached. You can use the exact same camera body as what you have right now. It does not require a specific or a unique Venice camera system. You detach the imager block from the main body of the camera, you attach the plate to the front of the body, you attach the other end of the cable system to the imager block, which takes under two minutes to do, and you're ready to go. Cameron would go on to use this camera system to great effect for Avatar Way of Water, and we talked about that in another video. We linked that below if you'd like to check that out. But it's not just about James Cameron. The system resulting from the J-Cam, the Rialto, is just one instance of Sony modifying their hardware to suit the needs of those in the industry. The company has said that they aim to be as in touch with their base as possible, taking suggestions at trade shows, festivals, studios, and sets by phone, by email, by pretty much every avenue possible. And while it's great that this system was built for James Cameron's needs in Avatar. Was it just a gimmicky camera for a director who literally has all the time and money in the world to play around with such gimmicks for movies? Well, to answer that question, we must venture out of the watery depths of Pandora's oceans and into the sky.
Yes, that's right, Top Gun made great use of the Rialto system. Instead of using GoPros or the equivalent, like some in the industry have, cinematographer Claudio Miranda assembled a dedicated camera rig with the Rialto in mind to specifically fit inside the cockpit of a fighter jet. The whole thing about Top Gun is trying to get things in camera, to get people flying in the air. I think the Sony Venice is a great collaboration between us. It's got a great build to it, it feels solid, the little Rialto mode, and now the camera could kind of fit where it couldn't fit before. This setup allowed them to capture several angles all at once in a very tightly managed space. Funny enough, Tom Cruise even had to like teach the actors how to operate the four or six Sony Venice cameras while flying around in the fighter jets. Cramming a multitude of cameras into a fighter jet was no easy task. Getting a camera into a Navy F-18 is a lot harder than it sounds. Getting six cameras in there is almost impossible. The PL mount on the cameras had to be removed. The lenses needed to be compact as possible, with parts of it even needing to be shaved off in order to gain more space in the cockpit. Safety regulations needed to be met in order for the pilot to eject unobstructed, if absolutely necessary. Anytime we put anything in the cockpit of an F-18, we have to be very clear what impact that's going to have. If those cameras come off under G, now you have something coming back and hitting an actor or going forward and hitting the pilot, and that could be bad. So we had to make sure everything was going to stay on the airplane throughout the entire flight. So the system in this situation was able to handle a lot of the limitations they had inside of a tiny jet fighter cockpit, allowing the cameras to be triggered with the pilot just by hitting one button. And if you remember, Top Gun made a massive push to be in IMAX movie theaters, and they needed IMAX approved cameras to make it work. And like we mentioned that before, the Sony Venice is approved for that. <laughs> The roadways will be getting their share of screen time for the Sony Venice Rialto system too, in the upcoming Gran Turismo movie. The, so the, the Sony Venice 2 camera has, has a detachable sensor, which is the, it's called the Rialto. And, and we used the, the, the Rialtos all over the inside of the cars, in the cockpits, in spaces that typically you could never get um, an IMAX resolution sensor into those kinds of spaces. Remote control, confined spaces, dashboards, cars, I mean, you name it, you can mount it. And again, it does not sacrifice any image quality whatsoever. It's exactly the same performance as if you were using the imager attached to the camera body. Another big advantage, the sensor block, the weight of it itself is about three pounds minus the PL adapter. So by utilizing the native E-mount on the Imager extension system, you can use even lighter weight E-mount lenses. With director Neil Blomkamp stating that the lightweight nature of the Rialto system was the perfect fit for recreating the angle seen in Gran Turismo game series and with filming specialized shots such as close-ups of the car cockpits, recreating the thrill that racing should inspire. And then for exterior photography, um, you can get into places and position them because they're so light uh, in, in places that we could actually simulate the Gran Turismo angles. And then finally, the, the third person POV behind the car. We, we had a tiny Rialto camera on an arm that gave us a POV that was, you know, highly unusual. Sony is a really great example of a company that is taking the considerations of its users to heart. It's something you wish you could see in the industry a lot more. And even though Sony is gaining more and more goodwill from high-end filmmakers, one camera of theirs is unlikely to get the same fanfare and user following as the modern Cinealta cameras enjoy. And if you want to learn more about the most expensive digital cinema camera of all time from Sony, click here to find out more. It's absolutely insane how expensive this camera was.